So we discussed about the transport system in animals that is in human beings, blood, blood vessels, heart. It's a complicated system, complex system, well developed system because the requirement of animals is uh, very different compared to plants. Animals they require very good transport system because they go in search of their food and their eating habits are different and their energy requirements are entirely different. But whereas a plant, this, its energy requirements are very less. Because plant itself has got the own energy harvesting mechanism, that is photosynthesis. Now let us see, but even then, the plants also need a kind of transport system. Let us see how they are able to transport the materials in their bodies. If you see the body design of a plant, the plant is basically having two major parts, shoot and root. The root is under the soil and uh, the shoot is above the ground where you can see it grow the various parts leaves like this so from where does this plant get the materials in plants many of the materials like either gases carbon dioxide or water they can be simply absorbed by diffusion diffusion is a mechanism by which they can simply absorb the materials but it is limited Sometimes diffusion may not be possible from this point to this point because certain trees they grow very tall, meters of height, more than 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet. So that much height. So here it may not be possible by simple methods like diffusion or osmosis, the materials cannot be transported. Actually, what are the basic materials that are transported here in plants? You see, water is the major one. Along with water, minerals. Because for the growth of plant, water is needed as well as minerals like sodium, potassium, phosphorus, along with that so many other zinc, zinc is required, magnesium is required. So in this way so many minerals are required by the plant and these minerals are absorbed along with the water and the water it needs to be transported to very long distances in the plant. Because here this is the site of photosynthesis in the leaf. Water is required there, water is available in the ground. So from here the water has to be transported there. But as I told you, the growth pattern or the energy production is less compared with the animals. Energy requirements are less in plants compared to animals. So here the process is slow, the transportation is also slow. They have some tissues to transport the water, but they don't have any pumping organs like heart in animals. Plants do not have any pumping organ and this is the one way that is water from roots to the tip of the plant to different parts of the plant in this direction transport is required and food is prepared in these parts sometimes the food has to be stored here in case of carrots or other plants food is stored in the roots sometimes the food is stored in the stem sometimes the food is stored in fruit so if the food is produced in the leaf it has to be stored in the fruit so it should be transported to this fruit so here the transport is required the prepared food materials are to be transported. So the transport of water and minerals is done by a special tissue called as xylem and transport of food other materials is done by phloem. These are the two different tissues which form the vascular tissue. We call it as a vascular tissue. The plant stem has got stem and root, they have got a vascular bundle at the middle. The vascular bundle is comprised of the two tissues, xylem and phloem. The construction of the xylem and phloem, the various parts of the xylem and phloem are studied in your ninth class, plant and animal tissues. So in this lesson, you learnt about this xylem and phloem, what are the components and how do they work. So here, the plants, they have the transport system, that is the vascular system, which consists of xylem and phloem that help in the transportation of water and food materials. So in plants, we discussed that there are some tissues called as xylem and phloem that help for the transportation. But what are the driving forces? So xylem is responsible for the transportation of water, phloem is responsible for the transportation of food. So here the transportation of water, transportation of food, what are the driving forces? What makes them flow, move in these tissues? So here the transportation of water, the transpiration is the major process which makes the water to flow. 
up in upward direction that is from the roots to the tip of the leaves so what is this transpiration the leaves of the plants or trees they have pores through which the water is evaporated continuously that is by the transpiration the plant it loses water in the form of water vapor so when this tomato are open the water vapor it goes out so the water is absorbed here the water vapor is evaporated here so as the water vapor is evaporated in the leaves the leaves will pull the water from the bottom so this transpiration it creates a suction effect suction suction effect that means a pull pull of water from the roots so by that the water is traveled in the xylem in this way so this is a kind of physical force and there are some kind of other forces also the binding force between the water molecules the cohesive forces and other forces also they drive the water to travel up but here the transport of water is only one direction unidirection so this is achieved by simple physical forces the second task is transportation of food is not achieved by the simple physical process the second part the transport of food is called as translocation the food it has to be transported from one part to another part not always in one direction sometimes to the top parts sometimes to the bottom parts when the leaves are preparing the food once the food is prepared the prepared food is sometimes it is transported in the root stored in stored in the root so the food has to be transported to the root downward downward translocation sometimes when the plant is blooming the food is required in the bud part so from the root the food it it should be transported to the bud upward direction so sometimes food is transported downward upward you call it as translocation so this cannot be done by the simple physical forces like this transport of water there the energy has to be spent for transportation the energy in the form of atp is spent for the translocation so how this atp helps so in the part of the plant where it wants to create the pressure so into that particular area sucrose is pumped into that particular area so sucrose is pumped by atp once the sucrose is injected into the particular cells then what happens it creates more pressure compared to other cells so here the energy in the form of atp is useful for the translocation let us see how so when the materials are to be transported substances like sucrose sucrose are sent into the phloem tissue that is by the energy molecules atp are utilized here and this sucrose is mobilized into that phloem tissue so this creates the pressure osmotic pressure so this osmotic pressure makes the food materials to move in the tissue so this creates so for this creation of osmotic pressure energy is spent in the form of atp so that is what observed in the transportation of food that is the translocation which is done by the energy used process so this is the process which is not as simple as this one like transportation of water it is a, involved only the physical forces but here the energy is spent in the form of atp to drive the food materials from one location to another location which we call it as a translocation in this way the food and water are transported in plants so now let us see the excretion the another important life process so excretion helps in the elimination of waste materials that is in the either animals or plants let us see in case of human beings first and uh, we have seen that in our bodies the energy is required to carry out various activities maintenance and for our growth and survival so for this energy materials are supplied from outside of our body that is the food material and oxygen are supplied and both these materials are reacted oxidized in the cells in respiration so energy is released food and oxygen reacts and energy is released along with the energy what is released waste is released waste is produced in the form of carbon dioxide plus urea and other materials but this waste it cannot stay back in the body for a long time it is not um like uh, it is a harmful material if these materials they stay in our blood for a long duration they may affect our health and systems so these materials are to be sent out of the body so how it is done so the elimination of waste materials out of our body is called as excretion here also the transport system takes part the transport system takes these materials from the source of production that means from the cells from where they are produced 
the blood collects these materials and supply to that respective systems which will clear it off what are the systems co2 is taken to lungs because in the lungs carbon dioxide is expelled out then how about the urea urea if it remains back in our blood it is dangerous condition it toxic it is a toxic material it toxicates various body parts so this urea has to be eliminated and the removal of urea is done by the excretory system of our body excretory system what is this excretory system we have a pair of kidneys for the excretion of wastes like urea so where are these pair of kidneys located they are located in our abdominal cavity so that is towards the back side you can feel that they are below your rib cage at your back side you have a pair of kidneys so what do these kidneys do they are red color bean shaped organs present in our abdominal cavity and they have organs called as uh, kidneys and uh, urinary bladder ureter and urethra so kidneys are the major organs of excretion let us see how the excretion uh, how the filtration takes place so the blood the deoxygenated the, the blood which is supplied to the body parts from the heart so the blood is supplied to the kidneys even and the kidneys they have got highly coiled blood capillaries so in these blood capillaries they have the kidneys they have structural and functional units called as nephrons so these nephrons are associated with blood vessels nephrons are the tiny filters the blood is pumped into the kidney through these highly coiled capillaries so these capillaries are connected to what nephrons nephrons are the thread like structures present in the kidney so these nephrons they will absorb the toxic materials from the capillaries they will absorb the toxic material like urea uric acid other salts and these nephrons they pour they collect all these waste and they concentrate the waste that means they remove the excess water and they concentrate it and this concentrated waste in the form of urine it is passed through the ureter and reaches the urinary bladder so what is the function of this nephron what is nephron nephron is a unit of kidney what is the function of the nephron to filter the blood what does it filter it removes the urea along with the urea some water is absorbed some salts are absorbed but reabsorption takes place so whatever the salt is absorbed whatever the water is absorbed and whatever the waste is absorbed the waste is kept back the water is reabsorbed so the urine is concentrated otherwise we would go for a toilet for a number of times and we may excrete large volumes of urine we lose water from our body it doesn't happen whatever the water is absorbed by the kidneys the water is reabsorbed only the waste with little amount of water it is concentrated to concentrated urine so the concentrated urine is passed through the ureter and reaches the urinary bladder so once the urinary bladder is full we get the sensation of going to a toilet and then we excrete the urine out in this way the waste is excreted out in case of human beings so this is achieved by a pair of organs called as kidneys so kidneys they filter the blood to remove the toxic materials nitrogenous waste like urea uric acid and other salts carbon dioxide is excreted by lungs now let us see the excretion in plants so plants do not have any well developed excretory system and they don't produce the amount of toxins as we compared to other animals and all so here but even then they have some kind of waste materials we know how the gases are managed in their in their bodies plants oxygen and carbon dioxide they can easily exchange with the air with the help of stomata so they have no problem in exchanging the gases they can release it out to the carbon dioxide or they can take the carbon dioxide they can take the oxygen or they can produce the oxygen so that is managed in such a way but what about the other wastes metabolic waste the reactions takes place in their cells and many materials are produced so these materials are stored in the vacuoles of this cell sometimes they are stored in the leaves wastes are stored in the leaves and seasonally or occasionally the leaves fall 
sometimes these leaves after completing their life the leaves become yellow and dried they fall down so along with that leaf the waste is sent out of the body sometimes some, some wastes are stored in the resins and gums certain plants they secrete resins and gums which consist of waste materials of course they have some uh, commercial value uh, for these resins and gums we find it they are useful for us but they are the waste materials for the plant so it throw out the waste in the form of resins and gums certain plants they store their waste materials in the form of crystals called as rhaphides and recently it is found that some plants they excrete the waste materials from their roots into the soil also so in this way they can have they have certain various mechanism of getting rid of waste materials but they don't have a system like kidneys and excretory system what we have seen in case of animals so this is how the various life processes in plants as well as in animals how they are controlled so the major purpose of this life processes we studied once again we just recall it the main purpose is that survival of the organism maintenance and repair of the organism growth and development of the organism you say something is a living thing it must have these life processes otherwise it is not living a living thing must have some movements in its internal body parts of course certain animals they have external movements even though they don't have external movements they have some kind of movements in their cells molecules flow the molecules from outside in the form of air or oxygen in the form of food or any other material enter the body so many reactions takes place waste is excreted useful materials are utilized the organism grow reproduce and perpetuate its race and every time the organisms the status the life is maintained the body parts when they are damaged they are repaired so everything is carried out by, by this life processes which we have discussed here so those are the nutrition respiration transportation and excretion if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus